Okay, this is a very quick video that was uh, has been requested of me, and this is a really common request. Um, the person requested, you know who you are. I got your message back, so I'm just gonna just do a little bit, of, a little part of this, and, and see where we go. Okay, so it says, let R, let R be the area bounded, be the area bounded. By the graphs. That's a terrible day. By the graphs. Y equals square root of X and Y equals X halves. And we're supposed to find the area of R. So I did this a couple of ways. And the first way, just to be completely honest with you, is I looked at my calculator and I just wanted to see what this looked like because what if there is no bounded area? We'd be busy doing nothing, I guess. So let's take a look quick. So I, this is a CAST TI Inspire. They actually have a new one out, the CAST CX or something, which I understand is pretty cool. Anyway, so I'm going to just graph this. I'm just going to hit uh, Control. Here's the square root symbol up here, X. And hopefully that's what you were, that's what you were expecting also. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph the second one as uh, Y equals Control Division X. Oops, that's not good x over 2 so x over 2 and hit enter and there's that and okay so there's some news for us that we do have functions that are bounded and we might be able to see this graphically that we can obviously this one that they that they intersect at 0 they also intersect at 1 2 3 maybe that is 4 perfectly can't be sure can't be sure one thing can be sure of is this is that with these two videos, uh, I'm sorry, with these two graphs, that what we can see uh, is that the intersect. Other thing that I want you to keep in mind is that the fact that, that the square root of x is over x over 2 in this point. And that's going to be really important in just a second. Let's see where they do intersect. And what I'm going to do is I'm just go to my calculator and ask the calculator to solve that for us and say solve. There's tons of ways you can put this into your calculator, but this is the easiest one for me. Solve open parentheses, square root x, sorry, is equal to x over 2, comma here, in, which is in terms of, in terms of x, hit enter, and it, it is, it turns out that this is true, and if you put that in, you can see that's true, uh, the square root of 0 is 0, 0 over 2 is also 0, um, the other x value is 4, square root of 4 is 2, and 4 over 2 is also 2, so there's some proof there. So I'm going to go back here and look at this quickly. I'm mm, going to go back here and look at this quickly. Previous page. So now what I'm going to do, you know, I'm just going to make a composite of these two things. Said that one function is higher than the, than the other function. And because that's true, the area in here that we're looking for, the area right in here, is the is the area of the red function minus the area of the green function. So we can graph that as a composite function and call it that. We can say control x minus the, the lower function. And the lower function is, of course, x halves, so x halves. And there's that composite function. And I'm suggesting to you there that this is true. They intersect at the same place. This intersects the x-axis at the same place these two functions intersect. And I'm trying to, to convince you that the area in here between the red curve and the green curve is the same as the area under the blue curve over the x-axis. So that's what I'm going for here. So I'm going to analyze this. Went to the menu, hit Analyze, then hit Integral. And then it says... If you look here, it says pick the graph that you want. It's going to pick the blue graph anywhere. There it is. And then I'm going to lay down this point. And look, this thing is so cool. It tells you that you have your point of intersection there. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to wait. There's your other. Whoops. Say it. Point of intersection there. And, and it says here that the area is 1.33, otherwise known as 4 thirds. And I'm trying to convince you that this area is the same as this area in here. So, okay. So, having said that, I'm going to just go do some 
calculus here as quickly as possible. And look, we have we have our interval, right? We found out we found out that our curves intersect at zero and at four. So we want the area between that. So that's what we're saying. Give me the area between zero and four of well of square root of x. Remember, the square root of x is the same as x to the one half power minus. Let me just do this and see if you can see where it came from. Minus the area of that other curve, right? So hopefully you're seeing what that is. Now, if you don't mind, what I'm also going to do is I'm hoping I can convince you of this. That Look, I'm trying to convince you that there's a one half in here that I'm going to pull out. So if you don't mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take put this here. And I'm going to pull this one half out as a constant multiplier. And there's that one half. All right. So I erase all this junk. I'm going to put the x back. And look, if I multiply this one half back in, it'll go back to where it was. But it makes it a heck of a lot easier to integrate. Please pretend that I put dx here and I put dx here. Yes, dx here and dx here. Right, and there should have been a dx over here. Okay, so now we're going to do what we came here to do, which is to integrate. So we're going to integrate this. And the integration of this is, right, we're going to add 1 to the exponential value. So 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. So x to the 3 halves over 3 halves minus 1 half times, look, this is to the first power, so you're going to add 1 to that. So x and then you're going to put 1 plus 1 at the bottom also, so that's 2. So I'm going to clean this up. And remember, because we're not applying anything yet, I'm going to have to put this C out here. Just for now, I'm going to clean it up in just a second, if you don't mind. Look, this comes up. Remember, this is the uh, theorem of complex fractions. And what we know is that this thing comes up as its reciprocal. So this 2 right here is this 2. So it comes up as 2 over 3. This 2 is this 2, this 3 is this 3, right? And then we have x to the 3 halves power. Let's get rid of this junk here. So that's me taking the integral here. And then I'm going to multiply this times this. I'm going to get negative x squared over 4. And now, if you don't mind, I'm going to actually evaluate this. So I'm not going to put this C because I'm going to take this as a definite integral of 0 to 4. I'm going to now apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Fundamental theorem of calculus. F of B minus F of A is equal to the area. And F of B is this. It's B is 4, so it's F of 4. Let's look at this for a second. This is good algebra. This X is this one, so 4. And 4 to the 3 halves over 3 minus 4 squared because right x squared over 4 so let's look at this really quickly because we're almost done thank goodness and the way I'm going to look at this right here I'm going to do this at my convenience if you want to you can take the 4 and you can cube it and take the square root of that it's just a pain in the neck but for me I know that this in the denominator is the root so the square root of 4 is 2 and 2 to the third power is 8 and 8 times 2 is 16, so I have 16 thirds, minus 4. I get it, this is 4. But 4 is the same as 12 thirds, and that, I don't know about you, it helps my brain, so sorry. And when we subtract those, we get 16 minus 12 is 4, and 4 thirds, and I'm telling you right now, if you go back and look at your calculator, 4 thirds is the rough equivalent of 1.33, so I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have requests, let me know, and um, the sooner you let me know, the better, and I'll do my very best. This problem had part B and C. I, I didn't do them uh, be because the, the request came back saying that she had figured it out. First off, great for you. Way to, way to go. Um, and let me know, okay? Oh, oh here, there's our 1.33. Yay, us.